All right, boys and girls, so we're back for another video on an ACT math idea. This one does show up very commonly, very frequently, but more than anything, it just showed up on the December 2022 test. This question down here, number 47 to the bottom left, is the most um, relevant one because it's the most recent one. Anyways, let's take a look at this property and I'll try to teach it first, and then we can try to apply it. So this weird property of triangles goes like this. If I have this triangle here, and I told you that this was, I don't know, three, and this was four, what could this side be? What are some possibilities? In other words, could this side be eight? Well, I call this the idea the wealth inequality idea. And of course, that's just me making something stupid up here. But it's essentially the idea that you and my net worth combines. If I added my bank account and your bank account, we, and we both work really, really hard, we should be wealthier than the boss. But is that the case in real life? Obviously not. Um, you and I, regardless of how hard we work, we will never reach the likes of Jeff, Jeffy B or Elon Musk, right? Anyways, the idea is that this side and this side do stand the test of truth. Really, geometry does, is fair. It is just because this side and this side must be bigger than this side. So could this side be eight? No. I'll say it again. <clears throat> this side cannot be eight because three and four, any two sides of a triangle must be bigger than the third. So could this side be eight? No. No. Could this side be six? Yeah, I think it could be because three and four are bigger than six. Now, that's pretty cool, but now I have another question on the other spectrum, on the other end of things. Well, that's if this is a big number like six or seven or eight. What if this was actually just one? Could that side be one? No, it actually couldn't because this side and this side added together make four. And what did I say? I said, any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third. So, oh, this actually has to be a little bit bigger than one. We could even say 1.1. That would satisfy it. So for this side, what range of values actually satisfy this triangle? Well, I would say anything greater than one. So X is greater than one. But also, I don't think it can reach seven. Again, X must be bigger than 1, but also X is going to be less than 7 for this side. It must be. And that's the idea of wealth inequality, at least in accordance with geometry. So let's see if we can apply this rule to this left question from the December 22 exam. It says, let A, B, and C be respective side lengths of a triangle. A is 5 and B is 7. Which of the following gives the possibilities for C? Well, again, if I draw my triangle out, maybe it helps us. If I have this nice triangle and I say this is 5 and this is 7, what could this last side be? Well, could it be 12? Nope, it can't be 12, really. It has to be a little bit less than 12, like 11.999. That's okay. And what about on the other end? Really, what's the difference between 5 and 7? 2. So I think I'll ask the question, could it be 2? No, it couldn't be because, again, 2 and 5 make 7 or are equal to 7. That doesn't work either. In which case, I think we could understand that this would be, or it would have to be 1 or 2.0001. So anywhere between 2.0001 and 11.999 satisfies it. So therefore, I think the best answer would be D. So what is this saying? This is saying that C could be a little bit bigger than 2, but it must be also smaller than 12. That is the answer for number 47 from this most recent ACT. I hope that helps make sense of that. If you have any questions, comment down below, but come over here for number 48. This is from an older exam, but it's actually pretty relevant still. This isn't the exact same idea, but it is a weird one for sure. This question says 457. Again, four, five, seven. 
doesn't say whether it's right, triangle, doesn't say anything. But this is the idea for this. Let's try applying Pythagorean theorem, really, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's asking us whether it's a right triangle. So if it was a right triangle, I think it would conform to Pythagorean theorem. I have 4 squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared, which is, I guess, 49. I'll just go slow. 7 squared. Really, 16 plus 25 equals 49. Wait a second. It doesn't. 41 doesn't equal 49. And at that point, I know that it's not a right triangle. Now, my question to you guys is, is it acute? Is it obtuse? Or is it, first of all, isosceles? It's definitely not isosceles because this side is 4 and this side is 5. No two sides are the same, so it's definitely not J. So now my question is, is it acute or is it obtuse? Well, now there is a really cool principle here. The principle is, is this hypotenuse too big or is it too small? If it's small, in other words, if these two guys can overtake it, then it's acute. But if these two sides cannot overtake it, in other words, if a squared plus b squared is greater than, sorry, if is less than c squared, then it's obtuse. Why? Because it's saying, it's, it's suggesting that this side, the hypotenuse, the 7, is too big. It's too strong, which it is the case. The answer here is h. And again, why? Well, because 41 is less than 49. Again, these two sides added together, squared, of course, a squared plus b squared, is less than 7 squared. Therefore, I like h here. Definitely a weird one, but it can show up. I'll zoom out so you can see everything one last time. If you have any questions, comment down below. If not, please like, share, and subscribe if you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next one.